respond. In 2008, we saw about 66 verdicts um, over the course of the year. And now, this is a representative sample of what we saw. I can't say that this represents every single verdict that came out in 2008, as a lot of those can often be under seal. But these are the reported verdicts. These are the verdicts that uh, our brethren in the plaintiff's bar have posted on their websites. And these are the verdicts that everybody is generally aware of from 08. Of those, we saw 47 verdicts in mesothelioma cases, 15 verdicts in lung cancer cases, and only four verdicts in asbestosis cases. These verdicts came across about 17 jurisdictions, and this is a, a sampling of uh, where these verdicts came down. And I think one of, one of the things that this shows is that the, uh, the litigation is becoming a little more regional. It's not isolated in just one or two or three big states. Um, with the change of law in some states, the cases are migrating to uh, any place they can kind of get some traction. So you're seeing the forum issue not becoming as big uh, of, a, of a deal as it once was. A uh, lot of the verdicts that, that uh, were listed on that previous slide uh, were from plaintiffs that lived in those states. Now, we're all familiar with the American Tort Reform Foundation and their delightful list of judicial hell holes. In 2008 and 2009, they, designa they designated this list of uh, jurisdictions as potential hell holes or actual hell holes. And I think we're proud or not proud to say that Madison County is no longer on, on that list. It's, it's sort of sad. <laughs> but as we can see from this next slide, only two of these jurisdictions saw verdicts in 2008. So being a judicial hellhole does not necessarily translate into seeing a lot of verdicts there. And of those two, we, it was just Los Angeles and South Florida. Los Angeles and California in general will see is a very, very active jurisdiction for verdicts in 08, and we anticipate the same for 09. Here is where the hot jurisdictions were in 08, um, instead of just what were designated hellholes. California, both Los Angeles and the Bay Area were both very, very active. Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia. Um, the vast majority of the verdicts did come down in Pennsylvania and California, and we'll try and touch on those a little bit um, individually as we go through the, pre through the presentation. The DOJ, this is just in terms to give you a little bit of perspective of where we've come and where we're at so you can see things not in a vacuum but in terms of our past history. In 2005, asbestos plaintiffs won 54.9% of their trials. And in 2005, additionally, there were other types of plaintiffs that the DOJ looked at as who were also successful in their trials. And animal attack victims were pretty high up. There was 75%. Motor vehicles were right around where the asbestos plaintiffs were at 52%. And we see the non-asbestos product liability way down there at 20%. But I think what's interesting is where you see asbestos trials went to in 08, the plaintiff's overall win was 67% of the time. And these wins go across all different types of disease types. So these are asbestosis, lung cancers, and mesotheliomas. Um, you can see that the meso wins were slightly higher than average at 68%. Um, lung cancer wins for plaintiffs were way up there at 80%. And I think what this trend is showing is that you know, there is, you know, there's a 20, obvious 20% 20 increase uh, from 2005 in the, uh, the wins. And it, it is, it's becoming more evident that the, the risk is becoming greater, I think, on the defense side for um, some sort of verdict. Uh, the range of the awards uh, was all the way from 150,000 up to 30 million. And uh, what's, what's important about this slide is to note is that uh, over half of the verdicts uh, started at, at one million or greater, and, and there's, there's more $5 million verdicts, there's more $10 million verdicts. It used to be you may have one or two big verdict in a, ver verdicts in a year, and, and now you're getting five in 2008 that are in excess of 20 million. You don't have anything in the you know, astronomical range, like 100 million, but you're, you're getting a bunch of verdicts uh, all in, a, in that pretty big $20 million range. It seems that the one million dollar number is the tipping point uh, where uh, the, the defendants and the plaintiffs have to decide, is that the number that we're going to settle for in a particular uh, uh, case? And I think as we'll go through the different disease types, that does have a little bit to do with the disease at issue, but certainly I think for lung cancer claims, the right lung cancer claims, and certainly mesothelioma claims, that, that can be argued. 
If you look at the total amount of um, jury verdicts by <coughs> disease, it's, it's staggering. Mesothelioma claims were at over $288 million total over all jurisdictions in 2008. Lung cancer are much, much lower than that, but as we'll see, there's one particular lung cancer case in general that can account for almost the majority of that, um, and asbestosis is, is much lower, um, with a grand total of in excess of $325 million in 2008. The average award is, um, it's, it's, I think, as expected with mesothelioma as being significantly more than lung cancers at in excess of $9 million. Um, now, these averages take into account only the uh, verdicts where there was a verdict in favor of the plaintiff. The defense verdicts are not factored in um, to the average award as a zero. Um, and lung cancers were well below that in excess of three million and asbestosis claims. There were only two that went to verdict in plaintiff's favor in 08, but that was in excess of 300,000. And if you, if you look um, at the next, if you look, where, where are these verdicts coming from? Who are the defendants? Uh, it, it obviously is getting spread out. It's not as much as uh, it used to be, obviously, with just a, a gasket or packing or maybe a, a joint compound company here or there. Um, it's going from friction to heavy equipment. HVAC cases are getting verdicts now, dental tape. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, we know the increase in the, uh, the shipyard and uh, the equipment uh, cases out there. Uh, so w what I think this has shown is that there is uh, an increase by the plaintiffs in searching out companies that have, have kind of been off the radar for a while or have never been on the radar and they're, they're going after them, and they're not just settling, they're pushing these companies who aren't used to being in the game uh, to, the, to the edge of, a, of, of verdicts. And what's interesting about, especially the, uh, the two defendants up there who we don't really see a ton of cases with, HVAC equipment and dental tape, the case with the HVAC equipment was the Morrison case out of um, San Francisco, and that verdict came back in excess of $5 million. The dental tape case was one out of New York, and that verdict came back in excess of $16 million. So when we're seeing these sort of unique defendants coming into to play at verdict time, they're not small verdicts. They are, they are rather large verdicts and significant ones. One other thing that I want to point out as far as uh, defendants and trials in 08 is that of all of the uh, trials that went forward, 11 of them involved claims um, of naval exposure, naval exposure allegations or shipyard exposures. So that represents about 16.5 percent of all cases that went to verdict last year were Navy cases. And I think we can all agree we've seen an increase um, in the number of cases we see with naval allegations despite the fact that a lot of these exposures are very, very historic in nature. We're still seeing a lot of these cases and I think a lot more of them are going to be going to trial.